Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today, we're finally taking a look at some ultra portable laptop CPUs from AMD and Intel to find out how each mobile platform is shaping up for buyers in 2022. On the AMD side, we have the latest and greatest Ryzen 7 6800U from their new Zen 3 Plus lineup, while on the Intel side for comparison, we have the Alder Lake Core i7-1260P, which is headlining a number of today's powerful thin and light systems. Both of these CPUs are capable of pushing package power up in excess of 25 watts, which is where most of today's performance-oriented ultra-portables are sitting. In fact, the default TDP for the 1260p is 28 watts, as part of Intel's new for this generation P-series, while the 6800U is designed to run at a range of TDPs between 15 and 28 watts. In terms of specifications, the Ryzen 7 6800U is an 8-core, 16-thread processor using entirely Zen 3 Plus CPU cores. It has a maximum boost clock of 4.7GHz and a base of 2.7GHz, along with 16MB of L3 cache and a 12-compute unit RDNA2 GPU running up to 2.2GHz new for this generation. The latest platform features like DDR5 memory and USB 4 are supported, and the whole thing is built on TSMC's N6 node. On the Intel side, the Core i7-1260P is a hybrid CPU combining a 4-core, 8-thread P-Core layout with an 8-core, 8-thread E-Core layout. The P-Cores clock up to 4.7GHz from a 2.1GHz base, while the E-Cores hit 3.4GHz from a 1.5GHz base. Then on the GPU side, we get a 96 execution unit XE graphics running up to 1.4GHz plus 18MB of L3 cache. Intel supports both DDR4 and DDR5 memory families for their chips, and the node used here is Intel 7. Our test system for the 6800U is the new ASUS ZenBook S13 OLED, a super neat thin and light notebook with a gorgeous 13-inch 2880x1800 OLED display. It's just a kilogram heavy and packs a 67 watt hour battery to help deliver strong battery life, which we'll be testing later. Complementing the Ryzen CPU is 16GB of LPDDR5-6400 memory and a 1TB SSD. Finding an Intel Alder Lake P-series laptop this generation was rather difficult, as like with AMD systems, availability has been quite limited. The 1260p isn't the fastest part Intel are offering, but it was the fastest we could get to make this video, and seems to be deployed in more laptops than the 1280p to date. Dell provided the Inspiron 16 5620 today, which allows the CPU to run in the 25 to 28 watt power class, like the ASUS system with Ryzen. This gives us a baseline apples to apples comparison, though this machine does use only 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory. Again, it's the best we could do right now, and we'll look to test other systems as they arrive. What you'll see in the charts that follow is a comparison to other laptop CPUs that we've tested, all tested in as close to the same power configuration as possible. Today has the 6800U running at a 25 watt long term power limit and the 1260P at a 28 watt long term limit, which in this instance was both systems running in their fastest available performance modes. I'll be working through some productivity benchmarks, compute benchmarks, gaming performance on the iGPU and battery performance, so plenty to get through, starting with, as always, Cinebench R23. In Cinebench, the Ryzen 7 6800U is the fastest ultra-portable class processor that we've tested so far, beating Intel's 1260p by 9%. It'd certainly be interesting to see how the 1280p stacks up here. However, the gains compared to its predecessor are relatively small at just a 4% performance increase, which is quite similar to what we saw testing the 35 watt HS series. The new Zen 3 Plus architecture isn't all that different from Zen 3 that was used in the 5800U, and so there isn't much headroom to improve performance. On the other hand, the 1260p is significantly faster than Intel's predecessor, the Core i7-1165G7. A huge 71% performance uplift allows Intel to close the gap to AMD, and I'm sure the far better naming scheme has helped here too. Like we saw earlier in the year comparing more gaming-focused CPUs, Alder Lake holds a decent performance advantage over Zen 3 Plus for single-threading. The 1260p is 18% faster than the 6800U, and 13% faster than Intel's last generation part. The 6800U really doesn't gain much over the 5800U in this workload, as the newer Zen 3 Plus model only receives a 7% frequency bump. In Handbrake, Ryzen continues its dominance over Intel in this particular benchmark. The 6800U was 22% faster than the 1260p, and actually ended up beating Apple's M1 Pro, which is a decent result given the power class difference. 
However, the performance uplift over the 5800U is minimal. Intel is certainly delivering a much larger gen on gen gain, so those with an 11th gen processor or older should definitely consider an upgrade. For code compilation on the go, the Ryzen 7 6800U and Core i7 1260P are neck and neck, to quite a surprising degree actually. Based on these numbers, I would think the 1280P would be the fastest 28 watt choice, and it's disappointing to see no major improvement for AMD over the 5800U. Meanwhile, Intel are getting a massive 65% performance uplift as they've finally shifted away from a basic quad-core design, which are no longer suitable for high-end mobile CPUs. Our Microsoft Excel benchmark is faster on the 6800U than the 1260p, though these results will be affected to some degree by LPDDR5 versus DDR4 in our test systems. Excel is quite memory and cache sensitive, so it's one of the few benchmarks where the newer Zen 3 Plus design from AMD is notably faster than the prior generation. Here it's 16% faster. Intel also benefits with a 45% performance gain over their previous generation, but this doesn't see them take the lead in this instance. However, Intel are the clear winner in the more broad PC Mark 10 applications workload, which tests the Microsoft Office suite. Again, there wasn't any real performance gain for the 6800U versus 5800U, while the 1260p was able to outperform the 1165G7 by 9%. This gave Intel an overall 12% performance lead, not a massive result, but large enough that it may matter for some buyers. 7-zip compression didn't see substantial performance gains for either the AMD or Intel platforms. Meanwhile, for decompression, it's only the Intel platform that gained gen on gen. The 1260p is 50% faster than the 1165G7. Unfortunately for Intel, AMD was so far ahead in previous generations that despite this big performance uplift, the 6800U still holds a 29% performance advantage for decompression. Intel mobile processors continue to lead in Photoshop, though the gains for both generations this time around are not very substantial, or in the case of AMD, non-existent. The 1260p is 7% faster than the 6800U here. In Adobe Premiere, the better choice this generation is the Ryzen 7 6800U, thanks to a sizable jump in GPU performance. The 1260p, while faster than prior Intel CPUs in subscores like Export, suffers from not much gain in GPU performance, especially when paired with DDR4 memory. I think the score would be better had LPDDR5 memory been used to match the AMD CPU, but the raw GPU differences probably would still play a part. For AI accelerated workloads like Gigapixel AI, Intel processors are the way to go due to their AI acceleration hardware, which this generation of Zen does not include. The 1260p performs well here without a discrete GPU, and as we saw last generation, adding a low power Nvidia GPU actually hurts performance unless you disable it. The 6800U doesn't perform horribly without AI acceleration, still beating the 1165G7, but performance is 24% slower than the 1260p. The tables are flipped for the Agisoft Metashape Photogrammetry benchmark. This workload is mostly GPU bound on ultra portable class processors, and we see a decent 40% performance lead to the 6800U here over the 1260p. It actually manages to beat the 12900HK here despite the much lower level of power usage. For integrated graphics gaming, the clear winner is AMD and the Ryzen 7 6800U. In Gears 5 running at 1080p using medium settings, the 6800U is significantly faster than other processors, and actually managed to deliver 87% of the performance of the Ryzen 9 6900HS. The Cry 7 1260p seems to really struggle with DDR4 memory, as if this chip was designed to be paired with DDR5 or LPDDR5 instead. But even if it did have faster DDR5 memory, the 6800U would likely still beat it, as the 6800U is 18% faster than even the Core i7 12700H, running at 45 watts, with its GPU configuration being identical to the 1260p. In Resident Evil 2, the 6800U also performed very well, smashing the 1260p with DDR4 memory, and outperforming Intel's H-series parts with DDR5 memory by 16%, despite the gulf in power consumption. While this class of ultra portable is still a way off an entry level gaming system with an RTX 3050, the sorts of performance numbers put up here are playable. For a game that's demanding on both the CPU and GPU, the 6800U holds up really well in Age of Empires 4, running using medium settings at 1080p. Once again, it's faster than Intel H series parts, which present an ideal case for Alder Lake's XE integrated graphics, and if you turn down the settings slightly, the experience is very playable for this sort of title.
In Rainbow Six Siege, the 6800U is an excellent iGPU option, and the performance here is mighty impressive from a 13-inch thin and light notebook. Not only do we see 72% better performance than last year's 5800U, we also see a 21% lead on Intel's best Alder Lake iGPU option. And lastly, in Watch Dogs Legion, the 6800U is 28% faster at integrated graphics gaming than the 12900HK playing at 1080p using low settings. Yeah, the frame rate isn't amazing here, but the average is over 30 FPS, which you could probably suffer through at a pinch depending on how desperate you are to play Watch Dogs. But given this is a relatively modern title, it does suggest that quite a number of games will work on the 6800U with low settings, even at native 1080p or near native using upscaling tech like FSR or the driver-based RSR. By popular demand, we're working on a suite of battery life tests for laptops, and we're just showing an early teaser here for this video, especially as I didn't have a lot of time to complete all the testing. But anyway, we're using the PC Mark 10 applications battery life benchmark, running on both systems using the best efficiency power mode in Windows 11, Wi-Fi enabled, 200 nits of display brightness. The raw numbers from this test show the ASUS ZenBook S13 OLED as having much better battery life than the Dell Inspiron 165620. However, the ZenBook, despite being a smaller design, actually has a larger battery. When we normalize the results to account for the differences in battery size, the Ryzen powered machine ended up with 13% longer battery life per watt hour in this test, which mixes light productivity work with idle time. Overall, it's been an interesting comparison between the AMD Ryzen 7 6800U and Intel Core i7 1260P, as both parts end up trading blows depending on the workload and each have their own strengths and weaknesses. There have been times in the laptop market where one CPU vendor has dominated across the board, but in 2022 that really isn't the case, so how you use your portable laptop will have an influence on which chip makes the most sense. In terms of the Ryzen 7 6800U, CPU performance hasn't increased substantially comparing this generation to the previous generation. Zen 3 Plus just doesn't offer much outside of a small frequency uplift. The upgrade to DDR5 memory may have a benefit depending on the workload, but most of the time it doesn't. The real killer feature here is the much faster RDNA2 integrator graphics, which brings well over a 50% performance increase compared to Ryzen 5000, and really makes iGPU gaming possible even in some modern games, albeit using low settings. This alone I feel makes the latest generation worth upgrading to from an older part, though if you don't use the GPU very often, then Ryzen 6000 may not be what you're after. The Core i7-1260P is a bit of a different beast. Unlike Ryzen 6000, this chip offers a massive performance uplift over its predecessor, the Core i7-1165G7, in CPU performance. Multi-thread is up over 50% compared to Tiger Lake, and we're getting a double-digit single-thread gain as well. This obliteration of Intel's 11th Gen U-Series offering makes buying an 11th Gen laptop today a really bad idea. You're definitely better off waiting for 12th Gen if you want to buy Intel and the laptop you are looking at isn't available yet. However, the GPU performance gains are minimal, and as we saw from our Dell laptop, DDR4 memory is not a good pairing if you want to use the iGPU for gaming. So which of these processes is worth getting in your next ultra-portable system? Well, for CPU performance, it depends on what you're doing. Despite big gains on the Intel side, the 6800U is still typically the faster part for multi-thread workloads, so if you have heavier applications you want to run, Ryzen is going to suit your needs better. However, the 1260p has stronger single thread, and that does help in some typical use cases for a portable laptop like Microsoft Office or Photoshop. For anything GPU related, whether that's gaming or GPU accelerated productivity, it's a slam dunk win for the Ryzen 7 6800U. This new RDNA2 integrated GPU is extremely impressive, beating the best Alder Lake XE GPU offering in their 45 watt H series parts, despite only running inside of 25 watts package power. I feel this makes the Ryzen platform more rounded in terms of performance, as Intel's only real winner here is single thread. Other platform features are pretty similar too, like PCIe 4.0 and DDR5 support. As for battery life and efficiency, it's very hard to make a judgement about this from a platform perspective, as we've only tested two systems and they're pretty different. However, lots of people have been wanting us to evaluate battery life, and the limited result we measured showed AMD ahead relative to the size of the batteries tested. The 6800U is also superior in performance per watt and performance on battery for some workloads, so the actual performance you get for a given battery drain 
will tend to be higher with Ryzen, though real-world results are typically influenced heavily by how the OEM configures their system. Aside from the fundamental aspects to these platforms, one of the biggest challenges at the moment is just getting them into the hands of prospective buyers. AMD has struggled for a while now to get their CPUs into a wide range of ultra portables, and while the tide is turning on that slowly, even right now in a period of poor availability, Intel Alder Lake systems are generally easier to find. Given the performance on offer here, especially for those that want to do a bit of gaming on their, say, 13-inch system, I think Ryzen 6000 systems could be in high demand, making it even harder to buy one of the few models available. Then talking about the exact systems I tested here, the ASUS ZenBook S13 OLED is an excellent laptop. The combination of high performance and a beautiful display is basically what I'm after in a laptop of this type in 2022. The Dell Inspiron 165620 is a reasonable laptop with good performance and a nice large display, but it's more of a mid-range option, and Dell opting for DDR4 memory instead of DDR5, for example, is going to limit performance to some degree, especially for things like GPU-based gaming. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you're interested in more of our laptop testing, please do let us know what other chips we should be testing shortly. So leave us a comment. Do subscribe as well if you're interested in more content like this. And of course, we do have our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links to those are in the description if you want to sign up and support the channel directly. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.